my friends, I have created a little class for anybody who is dealing with something that I have dealt with myself, where you get a pinching feeling in the front of your hip whenever you go into a squat, a lunge, maybe a happy baby, anything where your hips are in flexion. And so even if you don't experience that, this can be a really fun class for you to join because what we're basically gonna be working on is getting the gluteus medius working because when we get this pinching feeling at the front of our hips, that's because a muscle called the tensor fascia latte, or TFL for short, is a little bit overworked. And this usually happens, not in all cases, but for the most part, the cause of this is because the gluteus medius, a muscle back here, is not working. And so the TFL begins to take too much of the work and it's just overworked and unhappy. So we're gonna redistribute some of the activation from the front of the hips to the back of the hips. So to begin, I want you to come into a position that if you are dealing with this pinching feeling, may not be the most comfortable, but we're gonna move into a child's pose. But I want you to make this a comfortable child's pose for you. So one way that you can make it a little bit more comfortable if you do have this pinching TFL is to spread the knees nice and wide. You can also prop yourself up. You don't have to go fully into a child's pose. Maybe just sit in some position where it doesn't feel too uncomfortable, but I want you to just take a moment to close your eyes and take a deep breath in through the nose. And let that breath slowly seep out through the nose when your lungs are full. Inhale back in through the nose. Maybe notice your belly expanding onto your thighs on that inhale. And then let the lungs simply seep out empty as you exhale. One more breath like this. A little bit of effort to breathe in. To breathe out, just relax and let it go. Now begin to move your awareness to your hips and feel, perhaps even imagine what is going on under the skin in your own individual personal hips right here, right now, in this moment. How is the big thigh bone, the femur connecting into the pelvis? Perhaps even if you don't know what the anatomy is there, you can just imagine based on how you're feeling right now in that area of your body. And very often we, we underestimate the power of simply our own intention and how by placing our intention in a particular muscle, in a particular area of the body, we can actually begin to wake that area up. Maybe imagine that the back of your hips, around your beautiful bum, your luscious booty, with the inhale, those muscles are absorbing this warm energy that's within you. And this is leaving a nice melting softness to the front of your hips. And perhaps now just scan the rest of your body and let go of any tension throughout the rest of your body that's perhaps sitting there hindering you from feeling totally calm. And remember that we can feel calm even through energetic, active, dynamic movements. So it's not necessarily about totally relaxing the muscles, but finding a sense of calm. All right, take one more deep breath into the nose. Bring your arms underneath you and lift your hips up to come into a tabletop position as you exhale out. 
begin to just wiggle through the hips. And don't worry if at this point you're just like, nope, that's not doing it for me, Adele. I'm still feeling tight there. Don't worry, that's what this class is all about. So look back and just check that your shins are parallel, so the feet are pointing directly back from the knees. And then bring your gaze down to your hands and have them underneath your shoulders, or you can even walk them forward if your wrists feel a little bit tight at this point. Now once again, we take a deep breath in. Allow the lungs the belly to expand and exhale out entirely, forcefully. Feel that contraction through the abdominals to press this air out of your lungs and hold on to about 50% of that abdominal contraction so that you lose any dipping that might be happening in your belly. So as you inhale, soften enough so that you can breathe in fully, but don't lose that nice sandwich of energy that you've created through your abdominals. On your next inhale, bring the right leg back up behind you. So keep the knee bent, but lift it up as much as you can without losing that, a little, that little bit of activation through the abdominals. So you should start to feel your right gluteus maximus working. We're gonna get the medius working now. All we're gonna do is take that ankle over to the right side. So keep the knee lifted, and what we're going into is internal rotation through hip extension, and this activates the gluteus medius. Move it back through center, and maybe even externally rotate to bring the right ankle over to the left side of you. If you're just not sure about if your leg is doing the right thing, just glance back there and see what it's doing. So we're gonna move back and forth between internal rotation and external rotation. So like our right shin is like a little windshield wiper back there, but moving nice and slowly and pay attention if your knee wants to dip down, especially in that internal rotation, get it back up. All right, move to your external rotation if you're with me and back into your internal rotation. One last time, we're gonna hold it there. Maybe you're feeling the burn. All right, good. As you move into external rotation the next time, bring your leg out to the right side of you. So try and just bring it so it's even with the hip. We're not going forward with it yet, just holding it out there. And then maybe you've noticed that your weight's shifting over to the left side of you. So try and keep it as center as possible. So we're really having to use that right hip, the outside of the right hip. That's the gluteus medius that you feel right now burning to hold that leg up. Lower the knee down so it comes towards where it started, but then lift it back up. Good, we're gonna do four more of those. Lower it down, lift it back up. Lower it down, lift it up. If you're getting that pinching feeling, just take the knee back a little bit. Okay, lower it down, lift it up. Last one, lower and lift, good, extend it back behind you. One more time, give me that internal rotation, then lower the knee down, good. Again, take a deep inhale, and as you exhale, find that abdominal engagement, hold onto that nice long spine as you lift the left leg up. Just notice if you wanna go into a back bend, and really find instead that feeling of ah, <laughs> that's the word for it, ah through the left glute to extend through the hip instead of going into a back bend. Windshield wiper the leg, so keep that knee as high as you can as you internally rotate, bringing the ankle to the left, externally rotate, bringing it to the right. Remember, you can have a little glance back there. Maybe you have yourself in a position where you can see yourself in a mirror and some reflection or maybe you're filming yourself, that's always good. I think some people feel that it's super egotistical to film yourself doing yoga, but actually it can be really helpful to make a video of yourself, to go back then and look and see what you're doing when you think you're doing something and actually you're doing something else. All right, next time you're in that external rotation, just bring the left knee over to the left side of you, just even with your pelvis. And shift your weight ever so slightly back over to the left side. Oh, feel that 
burning that lovely burn through the left gluteus medius good and lower the knee down lift it up that's one we're doing five lower it down and lift four keep breathing three two remember you can use your exhale to keep the necessary amount of abdominal activation that you need and last time just bring it back behind you go into that internal rotation one more time and then lower that knee down and tuck the toes under now press into those toes to lift the knees up press your hips up and back and open the shoulders to come into a downward facing dog and you can pedal this out maybe really shake out those hips Whoa. whatever feels good after those little glute medius exercises we're going to walk the hands back now so just start walking your hands back towards your feet coming into a forward fold hands do not need to be flat on the floor and the knees don't need to be straight but i want you to now just bring a little bit of awareness to the base of the big toe of both feet and make sure you're pressing that part of your feet down but simultaneously lifting up through the inner arches so this is gonna create a sort of spiraling action of the feet. What we're looking for with that pressing down of the big toe knuckle is a kind of internal rotation movement going on with the lower legs. And now I want you to think about, without letting the big toes lift up, take the knees over outside of you. So external rotation. So this is creating this, like we're wringing out a sponge and what happens when you wring out a dish rag or something it becomes very stable right it's not floppy anymore it's going to be really nice and tight and tense and that's what we're looking for with our knees and this is also hopefully starting to translate into a feeling back there going on in your booty so with that keeping a, a nice long spine i want you to just drag your hands up your legs as you stand up so we're kind of mimicking a deadlift here and really squeeze at the top, opening up through the front of the hips. So really tilting the pelvis to help open up through here. All right, not too exaggerated, just enough. All right, we're gonna go back down. So externally rotating through the thighs, knees going out wide, big toes down, slide the hands down the legs and slide them back up. We'll do three more and of course, you could always grab something heavy and do your deadlifts with an actual weight, kettlebell, or maybe just a big jug of water if you don't have a kettlebell. All right, as you lower down for the last time, just walk the hands back to the front of the mat, bend the knees, take the knees nice and wide. You can keep the toes tucked under or bring the tops of the feet down. We're just gonna sink back into that child's pose now and just see how we're feeling after that. See if it's made any difference. And of course, you can bring your awareness back to your hips like we did at the beginning, maybe even closing the eyes and see if you can think about softening through the front of the hips and activating a little bit more through the glutes those areas that we got burning earlier and we'll rise back up into tabletop so we're basically going to do the same thing but take it up a notch with a straight leg instead of a bent leg if at any point you're thinking oh my gosh this is too much just bend the knee and repeat what we did in the last sequence take a deep breath in exhale out find that abdominal energy just enough your body knows, see, your body knows how much activation you need. So just with the breath, that's all that abdominal core bracing that you need to do. Now lift the right leg up, give me that internal rotation, straighten the knee. Externally rotate and internally rotate. It may help to flex your ankle as well. And then glancing back there, you can see how much rotation you're getting based on how much your toes are kind of windshield wiping back there. All right, keep the knee straight. Keep that line of energy through your core and bring the leg out to the side. So just even with the hip, ankle still flex. Can you windshield wiper your leg there? 
just a few times. Just internally rotating, externally rotating through the hip. Good, lower it down. Shake it out a little bit if you need to. Give it a little massage. And we're gonna lift that leg up for five and lower. Four, three, two, I'm shaking. One, good, take it back behind you. Lower it down with the knee still straight. Tuck both toes under and lift up into a kind of weird downward facing dog position with the left leg forward of the right. And walk your hands back to meet your feet. And once you're back there, put most of your weight in the right foot now. So just have that left foot there as a kickstand. And same as before, press down through the big toe of the right foot. Find that twisting of the dish rag sensation through the leg, really activating through the gluteus medius, and drag your arms up that leg, simulating a kind of single leg deadlift. Give me a squeeze at the top. Think about opening up through that right hip and bring your left knee up to your chest without losing what's happening in your right hip. Good. Lower it back down just as a kickstand and slide your hands back down the leg. Rise the breath back up. When you get to the top, squeeze the glutes, pull the left knee up, lower it down. One more time. These are pretty intense. So we'll just do three. Good, all the way up, squeeze the booty at the top, lift that left knee. But since I'm letting you off with three instead of five, we're gonna hold this. So make sure that right knee stays straight and you're not losing form. That nice activation through the abdominals happening through your breath. Good, now lower the left knee down. Lower your hands down and walk them forward. When you get to them to the front of the mat, just lower the knees down and maybe shake out that leg. Don't worry, we've got some nice relaxing things to look forward to, but first we're gonna get through all of this tough stuff. All right, ready for the other side. Take a deep breath in. Exhale it out. A little bit of activation through the core to empty your lungs. Inhale, extend the left leg back. Windshield wiper with the thigh. So as if every other part of your body cannot move and that's the only joint that can move. Whew, good. Then bring it out to the side. And I'm gonna have to move because I just kicked myself. All right, when you get it out to the side, Shift your weight ever so slightly over to the left, back to the left side of you, and internally rotate, externally rotate through the thigh. And maybe just notice, you know, any area that just feels like it could be the culprit. And lower the leg down. Maybe just give me a little wiggle. And when you're ready, we're gonna go for five. Lift it up and lower up and down, keep your weight evenly distributed across your hands, not all the way over to the side. Last one, up and down, good. Take it all the way back behind you with the toes, both toes tucked under, left knee is straight. Lift up through the knees, walk your hands back towards your hands and bring most of your weight into the left foot. The right foot's just there as a kickstand now. Find that dish rag, twisting. Bring your attention to your right glute and use that right glute to bring yourself up as you drag your hands along the left leg. When you get up to the top, squeeze that left glute really hard to open up through the left hip and keep the left knee bent as you bring the right knee up. Lower the right toes down. A little Baby, one-legged deadlift all the way down to the bottom. Rise back up. Squeeze the tush at the top. Bring the right knee up. Lower it down just to the toes. Your mind hopefully is on the back of the left bum. Rise back up. Keep that left knee straight. Squeeze the glutes. And bring the right knee to your chest. And breathe. One more breath. And lower the right toes back down. One more time, just slide the hands down. 
one more little deadlift and then crawl your hands back to the front of the mat lower the knees down nice and wide and we're once again find a little child's pose see how things are feeling now take a few smooth long breaths here like all you've got is time There ain't nowhere you need to be and nowhere you need to go. Nothing you need to do and certainly nobody else you need to be but you right here, right now. Lovely. When you're ready, one more time, we're going to come back through our tabletop with the toes tucked under. And just as before, I'll remind you, you have your options of what we did before here. But if you're ready, we're gonna take it up one more notch and instead of our tabletop position, we're gonna do these movements from a downward facing dog. So come into a downward facing dog. And when you're ready, lift your right leg up. So the left knee can be bent, the focus is on the right leg. And again, just windshield wiper through the femur, back there. All right. Bend the left knee and rise up onto the left toes. Look forward towards your hands and swing your right leg out to the side. Let's do the first one with the knee bent, just to uh, make sure we're all there together. Out to the side as if you're trying to take up as much space as you can and then lower the foot down, just wherever it goes to. It doesn't matter how far forward it goes. We're gonna take it all the way back out and push the shoulders open to come back into your three-legged down dog. Two more times, okay? So keep the knee bent, lower the knee down if you need to do that, or try and keep the leg straight for as long as you can, looking for that gluteus medius action as you then bend the knee to lower the foot down, coming into a kind of lizard lunge, all right? One more time, take it out to the side. The slower you move, the harder it is, of course. So it's up to you if you wanna sling your leg forward. Mm make it a bit easier for you, or keep acting like you've got all the time in the world. It's easy when you're in child's pose, huh? Good. <laughs> Lower the foot down to the outside of the right hand. Just shuffle it where, however you need to to get it up to the front of the mat next to the right hand, and allow the knee to fall out to the side so you're just on the outside of the right foot. Now, this may be nothing new to you, but very often we're very relaxed here. This time I want you to think about as if you're trying to stand up on your foot like this. Okay, don't worry, we're not gonna do that just yet. I mean, you are welcome to play around with bringing your weight off of your hands, but do be careful with that. If that feels too intense, just keep your hands down. But by putting weight into the foot like that, hopefully you're feeling this activation through the back of the butt. Good, just breathe. Just like always, breathe. Mm. Maybe even play around. If you're still getting this pinching sensation, think about tucking the tailbone under, going into more of a posterior tilt. Play around with bringing a little bit more weight or less weight into that foot. Play around with where the knee is, how far forward your knee is, how far out to the side it is, okay? Because we're all slightly different, right? And so I can't tell you exactly what cues, what movements, these little subtle movements that are gonna work for you. And honestly, we all change from day to day anyway. So, having said that, we'll move back again Taking the leg out to the side, if you've got it in you, back through your three-legged down dog. Lower the right foot down and walk your hands back to the back of the mat. This time we're just back on two legs. Find the dish rag movement, squeezing out that dish rag with the legs and rise up through a little deadlift. All right, we're working the right glute right now. So what we're gonna do is just walk to the front of the mat, but very mindfully. And I want to just pay attention as you step heel toe with that left leg that you're using your right glute to help go into hip extension with that step. You can do the same thing as you step forward with the right foot, pay attention to the left. And then one more step 
to bring yourself to the front of the mat. Walking, not just using our hips to lift our legs up because this is something that's worth paying attention to because we may only practice yoga for 30 minutes a day, but we're walking all the time. And so you wanna make sure if you're getting this pinching feeling, you wanna make sure as you're walking that your posterior chain is doing some of the work as well. All right, once you get to the top, we're going to just test it out here in a little squat. So think about driving the knees out, pressing the big toe mounds down as you send the hips back, lowering yourself into a little squat. See how it's feeling. We're just gonna keep going all the way down. Roll onto your back and bring your right ankle onto the left thigh. A little reclined pigeon time, okay? So what we're gonna do, I've got my watch here so I can time it for you. I want you to just move your left knee with your right ankle on top of it, as close to your chest as you can. Your upper body is relaxed. Your right ankle is flexed. So make sure that all of the sensations going on here are in the hip. And when you feel like you're kind of at that point where you're starting to get close to your stopping point, for 30 seconds, starting from now, without changing anything, pull your right ankle closer to your face. So not using the left leg, not using your hands, but just using the muscles in your right hip to pull your right ankle to your face and push your left, sorry, your right knee away from you. So like you're trying to pull yourself deeper into this reclined pigeon without any help. Good, that's 30 seconds. Now move away from the end range of your motion just by a centimeter or two. And I want you to relax it here. Just hold on to that leg if you want whatever you can do to make yourself feel nice and relaxed, but take your right thumb to the front of your right thigh. And as we lie here for one minute, just massage out that area. Maybe you're like, uh, it's, the, it's the glute now that needs massage and whatever you wanna massage, whatever area you wanna massage. But think about, Trying to encourage and touch is just such a valuable and powerful thing. And touch from other people, of course, is a core necessity for us humans, but we can also do a lot just for ourselves. And this really helps the brain body connection. And by massaging out that TFL, that area that feels really tight and pinchy, we can start to tell the brain like, hey, back off here a little bit. All right, good. So we move out of that and bring your both feet back down onto the mat. Maybe just, you know, wiggle around however you need. And we're gonna test and see how things are feeling now in a little happy baby. So bring the knees to the outsides of the elbows and grab out the outsides of the feet. And you may even notice that, oh, like, especially if you deal with this TFL pinching on both hips, maybe it's still there a little bit in the left, but the right's feeling a lot better. Whatever sensation you're feeling, just pay attention to it, notice it. And that's what it's all about, is just kind of understanding what's working for you, what's not working for you. And I always like to wiggle around, move around, so you could do the same, or you can be totally static, whatever works for you. All right, release your legs, hug your knees into your chest to roll all the way up to a seated position. Just cross the ankles or however you want to do it. We're just going to move our feet back to the back of the mat, back into our tabletop position where we started, ready for the other side. So tuck the toes under, lift the knees up, bring yourself into your downward facing dog. And this time, with a deep breath in, filling up the lungs, expanding the belly. Exhale out, lift the left leg up. Maybe flex the ankle so you can glance back there and see what's happening. 
Let's give me a little windshield wiper action through the hip. So just the femur moving in the hip socket. Good, and when you're ready, remember, repeat that or lower the right knee down, or if you wanna go full blast, we'll do it the next two times with that left leg straight. So bring it out to the side, rotate around through the hip as you bring it forward. When you get to the top, just take it all the way back. Find that three-legged down dog, opening all the way up through the shoulders to reset. And then last time, rock it forward, take up space, bend the knee at the last minute to lower the foot down. Shimmy that foot however you need to, to bring yourself into a lizard lunge. With the left foot on the outside of the left hand, bring the knee out to the side. Outside of the left foot is the only thing touching the mat. And begin to Play around here with shifting your weight over into that left foot. Remember, if you have a tendency to dip your pelvis forward and you're getting that pinching, think about getting a little bit of a posterior tilt to create a little bit more space through the front of the left hip. Keep pressing your weight down as if you're trying to stand up. And you know, if, if you're coming back to this and you're feeling stronger and stronger in this position, you can even begin to play around with bringing your weight all the way into that ankle, that foot. But do please take your time with that. Allow your body to strengthen slowly over time so that when you do attempt it, you're ready for it. And you will be, you absolutely will be. All right, good. So one more big move, taking that left leg all the way up through the side of us and back hitting that three-legged down dog one more time, then lower the left foot down, walk the hands back, find that torque, that bringing of the dishcloth, and slide your hands up your legs, deadlift action, squeeze at the top. All right, three simple little mindful steps forward, this time starting with the right foot, so just heel toe walk like you normally do, but make sure you get a squeeze of the left glute as you walk forward. Squeeze with the right glute as you step the left foot forward one more time. Squeeze with the left glute as the right foot comes forward. When you get to the top, bring the feet at foot distance, maybe a little bit wider. Think again about pressing down through the big toes, pressing the knees out to the side as you press your hips back. Lots of pressing going on. <laughs> to lower down to a squat. Really think about activating the glutes. And lower all the way down onto your back. With the right foot down, bring the left ankle on top of the right. And we've got, and once again, let me get my stopwatch out. All right, so bring yourself into your pigeon, your reclined pigeon position. So once you get to the point where you feel like you're at your end range, Stop there, and for 30 seconds, I want you to just pull the left ankle off of the right knee and push the left knee away from you, just using 100% the strength of the muscles around that joint, the left joint. If this feels too intense here, you can always just Move away from end range motion, end range of your joint movement. Good, that's 30 seconds, stop. And again, we are moving away from our end range of motion and just relax. We don't wanna relax when we're pulling ourselves as deeply as we can, because that can begin to pull on the ligaments. So always move out of end range of motion when you're working on relaxing and, and to a pose but we can massage all around the hip as well. Breathe. Close your eyes perhaps. Bring your like a visualization kind of focus to that area of your body. Good, three more seconds here. And if you like this, 
this little exercise of moving between 30 seconds of uh, intense and then a minute of resting, you can by all means repeat that a few more times. Begin to notice the difference that you may feel. All right, and slowly move out of that. Bring both feet flat and one last time, we'll just assess with a happy baby. So bring the knees to the outsides of the elbows and grab the outsides of the feet. And, ooh, yeah. I don't know about you, but my left hip was still pinching on the last happy baby, and now, now they're good. This, this stuff works, huh? I hope that it works for you. It's, it's what has really helped me. I definitely, especially if I have a day where I'm sitting down a lot, I don't really get much movement in. And maybe if I'm a little bit extra stressed, I start to notice this pinching coming back, but a little bit of glute meat activation, a little bit of mindful movement. And when you're ready, just come out of that happy baby, bring your knees to your chest, bring your arms out to the side to support you. And we're just gonna go into a little reclined twist now. So lower your knees over to the left side of you. Maybe bring your gaze over to the right. Take a few deep breaths here. I think it's, you know, it can be annoying when we get these like pinching pains, but really they're just little messages from our body saying like, hey, can you do something differently? Come back through center and exhale over to the right. Our body does speak to us. It doesn't speak to us in words. It doesn't speak to us in any kind of language the way we think of it, but it does speak to us. And I believe that taking a little bit of time, like you've just done with me today, taking a little bit of time to move around with this mindful intention, this respect and love for yourself and for your body. So it's the best way to learn that language of your body. Good, come back through center. Give your knees a little squeeze one last time. See how all that's feeling. Make any other movements that you feel you need. And when you're ready, just extend your legs straight out and maybe just give the front of the thighs one last little massage if you feel you need it. Use your breath now, slow and steady, to bring yourself into a state of total calm. while we're still practicing this, this awareness on our body, just scan through your whole body from the tips of your toes all the way up your legs, through your glutes, your back and abdominals, your chest, your shoulders, and down your arms, and finally on your neck, your jaw, your eyebrows, your tongue. Just noticing if you can redistribute any tension that you're holding on to from any of those areas, perhaps to your exhale. Maybe even visualize whatever the source of that tension may be just floating away from you. Wafting away like a like a bubble or a cloud until you can no longer see it. I invite you to stay there for as long as you need, as long as you want. Even if you do have somewhere else you need to be and other things that you need to do, it remains as you move away from this class and back into 
normal everyday life, it remains a fact that you don't have to be anyone else but yourself. And I am certainly so grateful that you decided to join me in this class. I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.